Friends and enemies, welcome to the Forensic Focus podcast. Uh, today we have with us uh, Emmy Polito, um, who's coming to us from our good friends over at Amped. Um, I'm I'm a huge fan of Amped, and uh, you've heard me wax lyrical about their fantastic products before. And we've uh, we've had the joy of uh, of uh, a few guests, Martino. Uh, the uh, the CEO has been on and we've interviewed him recently and of course we will link to all our our previous content in the in, in the show notes um but today we're going to be talking about uh, amp certification amp have uh, recently um brought an AFCE um so you can get some more letters after your name um <laughs> And, um, and we're going to be having a chat uh, about that today. But first of all, before we get cracking on that, uh, Emmy, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and and uh, how you ended up with Amped and uh, and all good things like that? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much, Sai. Thanks, Daisy. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here talking to you guys. Um, so, okay. So my story started back in the days where I was into music. Uh, you know, I was uh, living in a different country and I wanted to uh, develop my sound engineering skills. So I came to the UK about 26 years ago with a lot of hope and not a lot of money. And, uh, and, did, just do, and did just that. I, uh, you know, I did a, a couple of years of uh, Bachelor of Technology uh, in Multimedia Systems Engineering, uh, which then opened the door for me to broadcast. Uh, and it was all very, very nice and very trendy until the financial crisis of 2008, uh, where I find myself, uh, along with a lot of other colleagues, uh, looking for work in a very competitive industry. And I then stumbled into this uh, video forensic industry um, in about 2010, working in law enforcement first uh, for a few years, learning my trade. Obviously, there was a lot of interchangeable skills with the job I was doing previously. Uh, and then I worked a little bit privately and then I went back to law enforcement, to public sector. And then about a couple of years ago, Martino knocked on my door and I couldn't resist really joining this, uh, this company where I am now. That's an awesome background, like shift, doing, doing a bit of a pivot in a, a time of need, I guess, into video forensics is really, really cool. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I I found myself moving on from my initial plans, uh, mm -hmm. if you like. But every every time I did something new, uh, and the intention was always to do it temporarily, I find myself <laughs> li liking my new trade. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm 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 very much in love with what I do. It's not the easiest industry in the world. Um, yeah, obviously the the stuff that we see on video, especially, is not uh, is not always very pleasant. Mm. Uh, but being able to help, uh, you know, in in any way, uh, the industry, the, the criminal justice system, um, mm. it, it's very rewarding. So yeah. Oh, well, that that that's such an awesome trait to have to like be inquisitive and, and want to help. Like it's it's a pleasure to have you in our industry. Uh, I mean, for sure. Oh, thank I, you very much. I think it's Thanks. very very common amongst the people who are inquisitive and want to help it's um it's really great but we are here to talk about the afce certification so maybe you can give us a, a high level what it, first up what does the acronym stand for and then if it even is an acronym maybe it's just a new word that you guys made up but give us <laughs> okay. F, 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 um but yeah give us a, a high level overview of what yeah. it is it, it is an acronym daisy it is an acronym i mean like <laughs> You guys will know that, you know, if you feel worth uh, a decent amount of time in this industry, there are a lot of acronyms around, okay? So, for sure. Yeah, so AFCE stands for AMT5 Certification, uh, uh, Certified Examiner. Uh, so okay. that's what the uh, acronym stands for. Uh, is a, is a new program, so it's only been around for, I would say, less than a month. Um, and it kind of develops from our training program, which... You know, as you probably know, we are very passionate about, I would say we are as passionate about our training as we are about our products um, because we, you know, we're very into uh, training the user, not only to, to use the, to learn to use the software, but also to learn, um, you know, the reasons uh, uh, and the justifications for pushing every button on, on our products uh, and mm -hmm. therefore giving the users the theoretical fundamentals, the historical fundamentals into forensic video analysis and processing. Um, and the, the idea developed from there in a day and age where, you know, uh, a lot of what we do is, uh, you know, is accredited. 
uh, or it, it wants to be accredited, especially in the UK. Uh, and we are now at an age where we have to demonstrate competency. We have to demonstrate that we uh, do our job according to specific guidelines and to operating procedures. Uh, and therefore, demonstrating competency is key. Uh, therefore, we have come up with this uh, with this plan that you know, if the user uh, you know has underwent training, has used the software, and we're talking about AMP five here specifically, uh, if they use the software for a you know for work for a for a uh, for a lengthy amount of time, then they have the opportunity to take a formal online examination and to be able to acquire this title, AMP five certified examiner. Uh, which obviously will serve as, um, you know, proving, you know, that they are comfortable and confident with the software um, and, you know, and that they are competent in using that product. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, you're the Amped and, and yourself is really passionate about the training that you give, give the users, not just for the tool, but to be a practitioner. Um, sure. Is this the first foray for Amped into the certification space and then maybe touch on like some of those like requirements and frameworks that you're kind of working towards especially in the uk yeah sure i mean we are uh, you know as we as, as, as you probably know we are a fairly small company uh mm. and you know we're an independent company and we try programs um you know mainly by what our users feed back to us um and everything we do is it's an attempt if you like to see if is what our users need uh, and whether it will be, you know, of purpose to them. Um, so the idea came out with really with a number of users who expressed an interest in acquiring something a, a little extra rather than, for example, a certificate of attendance to a training course, mm. uh, something that they can then use to develop their personal uh, plan in a workplace or mm -hmm. to ease out the accreditation program. Um, so we are just starting out and we're just gathering interest. Um, you know, we have we have had already a, a trial plan, uh, you know, with a number of selected users, which has gone fairly well. We've had a lot of feedback uh, on the on the difficulty of the exam and, and things like that. Yeah, for sure. So um, the the exam itself, um, how is that being um managed at the moment is that a, I, I turn up at a, a certified location and sit a, a a test on your equipment or is it how, how's that panning out no no it's very uh, it's very uh, online and very flexible site so um uh, the exam is on an online basis so all that you require is a, a windows laptop or a windows system uh, with internet connection and with a licensed version of amp5 uh, alternatively, you can also use two machines, and this is very important because one doesn't realize, but in, in law enforcement, there's a lot of restrictions on uh, on people's laptops, on people's computers, and they can't easily install software and things like that. So you also have the ability to do the exam on an online system, but have AMP5 and an offline system, as long as you can transfer files from one machine to another, because the exam itself is made of two main sections, if you like. So one is a series of, uh, of multiple choice questions where uh, topics such as image theory, compression theory, uh, limitations of footage, uh, technical difficulties and challenges with the surveillance footage and things like that, uh, you know, are put forward, you know, to the delegates, to the candidates. All stuff that, of course, we cover during our training. Uh, and it's all stuff that is relevant then to how you use AMP5, of course. Uh, so that's one section. And then the next section moves on to some practical appliances, or so some practical samples, uh, some practical exercise where the user or the student has to uh, clarify a license plate or uh, restore fundamental issues with the footage, such as, I don't know, blurriness or lens distortion or things like that. Uh, and then reveal uh, a, a license plate number or answer a specific question from a video. Uh, so that part is all practical, of course. And again, it's all covered in our basic five training. Uh, and everything is online. Uh, once the user has done the exam and is happy with, uh, with his or her answers, and then you press the button and immediately you get notification of whether you have passed or failed the exam. Now, you said something interesting there, which was, 
covered in the AMP5 basic training. Obviously, AMP5 does a number of different training modules, one of which is the speed estimation stuff, uh, because I really enjoyed doing it. Um, And so, so this is certification on the base training not on the advanced module. That's a very good question, Sai. Okay, so the requirements are uh, having attended, or the the main requirements, if you like, is having attended a an official uh, AMT5 training course within the last three years. That can be the uh, the the basic, the main AMT5 training course, or any of the four modules that you mentioned. So uh, the speed estimation module, the file analysis and DVR conversion module, and we also have the uh, five updates module and the video evidence presentation modules, which are shorter modules and are courses that the student will have done perhaps a number of years after the main course if they want to develop a specific area uh, of their workflow. Uh, and therefore, absolutely any of those courses uh, are you know are valid to 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 apply uh, for the examination for the certification program as long as he as he has been done in the last three years. Uh, now the courses that are not uh, relevant and valid for application for the certification are the AMT Authenticate training course uh, and the Investigation Video Evidence course, which are based on other products that AMT produces that are not relevant to this certification program. So with the online aspect of the course, and and I see, and Sai is probably similar, and, and even yourself seen this, but it comes to the question of how do you know it's the student that's taking taking the exam? And obviously you're selecting a, a select subset at the moment to test it out, but is there any plans in the future or mechanisms that you're going to employ for proctoring um, the online exam, which will, could be... I guess difficult, or is it relying on the fact that you kind of need the license anyway? So that's going to be a pretty limited subset of who has access to the software to pass the exam anyway. Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, I mean the the exam is primarily all is 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 for AMT five users. Okay, so mm. uh, being an AMT five users require you to have a commercial license to use the software. Uh, and also to have a valid uh, s- a software maintenance subscription uh, program, which is we refer to as SMS, another acronym. There you go, another one there and there. Uh, so uh, I, <laughs> it, it's funny because the first time I, I came into the uh, into the company and heard all these acronyms, I was like, "Here we go!" You know what the hell is going on? You know, uh, but yeah. So that basically uh, consists of an annual subscription which then um, gives the user things like a, a full schmack support in sense of like, you know, if a user has got format issues and things like that, or if the user needs casework help, uh, we also provide that because we are forensic analysts as well as, uh, uh, you know, as technical support people. Um, and is renewed on an annual basis. And obviously you get like five upgrades with that as well. Um, we thought carefully about the, requirements for uh, for the certification um we, you know we want to we want to be in a position where the user has got all the uh, prerequisite in terms of all the stuff that he or she needs in order to pass the exam because that's our main purpose you know we want users to pass the exam first and foremost um, mm. you know commercial venture it would be a very very limited portion of um to income if you like um, yeah. The idea there is obviously to um, to supplement our training program, okay, which is important to us, uh, but also to provide the users with the ammo that they need for their uh, for their work requirements, if you like. Mm-hmm. Um, in regards to the online uh, uh, exam, uh, so at the moment it is based on a, uh, a you know on a private enterprise, so we have someone external that provide the examination elements, okay? So, um, you know, things like being able to choose from a pool of different questions, um, you know, so anyone can have, uh, I I think from memory, there are about 20 theoretical questions and 10 practical questions, something like that. And they are chosen from a pool of random questions. Um, You know, at the moment we are trying to, ensure that whatever that pool of random question is is balanced 
i.e. you're not going to just have like a license plate announcement questions. You're going to have a little bit of, of, of everything, you know. Yeah. So, and the, you know, we rely also on our, uh, on our, uh, on our students to, to provide feedback as well. Mm -hmm. I know, I know that uh, in the uh, well, what Desi refers to as CISP, and I refer to CISSP, and I'm sure a bunch of other people pronounce that acronym differently. But in in the uh, creation of that, there's uh, in the in when you actually sit the exam, there's a couple of questions that are included in it that are uh, actually test questions that don't count to your score, but are actually being assessed for future use. Is that something that you guys are doing? Uh, no, that, no. This is all just the a really off, off. Sure, the cuff? sure. No, all the questions in the exam uh, are go throughout the final scores. It's just the weight of the uh, of 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 each question that is calculated different. Well, actually, it's only. Uh, the distinction is only between the theoretical questions and the practical questions. So what mm -hmm. we didn't want to do um, is to, um, you know, have someone being able to answer all the theoretical questions correctly and none of the practical questions correctly and still pass the exam. Um, yeah. A, because from an online platform, we obviously cannot control, um, you, you know, element, things like, you know, I'm just going to type up this question on Google and see what the answer is, you know. So we can't control that. And we know that. Uh, obviously, we are, uh, when the exam launches, we have a series of, uh, you, know, you know, of I wouldn't call them legal, but of, of requirements. And one of those is, this is a closed book exam or should be a closed book exam. Okay, so if you are, you know, if you are an honest, <laughs> if you are an honest person and you're interested in, uh, examining yourself and see your ability to pass the exam, then you will not want to go and copy and paste questions on Google and, and find the answers there. Some of them are, you know, are more like tailored and more individual and, you know, you won't, you won't be that easy to do that anyway. Uh, some of them will not. So it, summarize, um, you, you know, to pass the exam, you need to be able to also uh, you, you know, um, uh, conduct successfully a number of practical exercises, as well as uh, a number of, of theoretical questions. So it's yeah. balanced. Um, that was actually the most challenging thing for us to uh, to to tailor, uh, because when we started doing the trial, for example, we found that uh, you know a lot everyone was passing it. Okay, and and we just sat down and thought to ourselves, well, either everyone is very good. And they follow the training and we're all very good or perhaps we need to balance it out a little bit um and that's exactly what we did so so with with regard to um you know at the moment everybody's passing but uh, with regard to failing how quickly is somebody able to reset uh is there a sort of a, a cooling off period so they can't just come in and uh, and reset the questions again with them fresh in their mind or go away and you know do that that is a very good question Sai, and one that obviously we we take very very uh, very seriously so as soon as you uh, as you uh, push your uh, finish exam button uh, on the platform you will get immediately a notification of your score and whether you passed uh, the exam or not if you passed it then you will receive an email and a link to your online certificate which you then can download and keep for your records if you don't pass, then uh, in short, the answer to your question is yes. So we'll, you will have the ability to redo, resit the exam. Uh, all, all the details about this are in our, in our blog articles. There are a lot of blog articles about this. So all the specific details are in there. But what we also do is provide the students with a list of all the resources they can access to be ready for the next resit. Uh, whether that's uh, online content on our blog articles um, or uh, or we also have like video series as well, which are very impactive uh, on how to use the product. Um, things like that are all explained. OK, because at the bottom line, we uh, you know, if you if you don't pass the exam straight away, OK, it's disappointing, but you you will have the ability to uh, to study, you know, to put your head down and and have the requirements that you need to then be able to reset it. You, you mentioned about like the idea of it being a closed book exam yeah. for, for the students and it, it's more of like a an honesty system than anything else. Is the goal to have it um, ratified or recognized by any body as a legitimate certification? And I'm, I'm asking this more from 
like I've got some experience creating content and and definitely certifications. And when you're looking at government organizations, there's particular rules around things sure. like proctoring or having like selling the course separately from the exam voucher or, or stuff like that. So is the end goal to have it recognized by anyone or is it just like, hey, we're creating a certification that we're hoping the industry picks up and recognizes? Yeah, sure. That's a good question, Daisy. So um, the goal there is to provide the user with another element where they can demonstrate competency, mm -hmm. uh, which is important. Um, so it's a bit tricky because uh, no certification out there will guarantee that you're a competent analyst or, or yeah, examiner or otherwise. There is just nothing you can do about that. Uh, I mean, I myself, I've sat like uh, analyst certification programs that were very strict in regards to examinations, oral examinations, mentoring, uh, uh, you know, course simulations and boarding and things like that, um, which have obviously helped to build up my confidence and competency, uh, okay, in the things that I do. Uh, and of course, I put that down into my curriculums, you know, into my reports, and things like that. Um, there is nothing that I'm aware of in criminal justice systems, or at least in the UK, um, in place to say, okay, you will only be able to come to court if you have uh, an AMT5 uh, certified examiner certificate, okay, or anything like that. Um, you know, there are things in place such as ISO accreditation who are becoming more and more of a requirement. Uh, but at the end of the day, is always up to the judge to decide whether you are competent enough to sit on the witness stand. Um, so what the certifi certificate doesn't do is open you the door to say, you know, I am an expert, I am, you know, I, I am that good and I can do this and I can go to court and I can do that. That it will not do. Uh, but that what it will do is will serve to demonstrate that you have taken an online examination, you know, that you have sit in a series of questions that challenged you. Uh, into a specific product that you use for your work uh, to do analysis or, or processing or whatever that you need, which will help, of course, to demonstrate that you've got competency in that area. Um, but like I said, you know, expertise comes from not just training and examinations and things like that. It comes from expertise, i.e., you know, having gone to courts and mm. had a hard time and, and survived, hopefully, you know, and built up from there. Uh, yeah. And this is a very important point. You know, we want to emphasize what the uh, certification does and what also it doesn't do as well, which is only fair. Mm. Uh, other than that, what I would say is, you know, I would encourage people to put that down in their CVs, you know, because it's an extra... Uh, you know, is an extra thing that you've done in your in your training, in your work, uh, you know, that will help obviously demonstrate that you're competent in doing, in mm. doing forensic video analysis and processing. Mm. No, absolutely, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. So somebody somebody's coming in new to to video um to, to AMP five, you know. What, how would you recommend that they proceed to get to the point of being an AFC? Sure. Okay. So the first thing we all we will always try when we sell a license of AMT five to uh, to include training to in include training sits. Um, the the actual software is quite challenging uh, at at first. Okay, uh, because it works in a way that is slightly different from your common image processors. And the reason for that is because it, follow, it follows what we call a workflow, um, i.e. a series of non-destructive processes or filters which you apply to your image and video in a specific order, because the order is also very important. And this is also what we teach in our training classes. And it might be a little bit daunting for someone who hasn't experienced this before. So we will always try and, 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 uh, and include training seats to the licenses that we sell. Of course, we we don't force, we can't force that, but we highly recommend it. Uh, so for someone new into using Amp5, we definitely recommend the basic training, the basic five uh, days training. Um, once once the, uh, the training has been done, uh, what we would recommend is go back to your workplace and apply your learning to your work, to your work, to your real case work. 
you you know you can you you can take the examination shortly after you've taken your basic training but we'll always recommend to apply your learning you know in in a real case work environment uh for a year for two years for however however long you feel in, you require to be comfortable with the software and be confident and then after that that will be a good time to take the exam because that will give you an extra you know an extra ammo there to demonstrate your competency so if if someone came in and i don't know let's say like it's happened to me you roll into a new job you kind of just get a whole bunch of case cases to work on and it, maybe it's different in in law enforcement where they're more structured with their training but let's say someone has like all this on the job training and they've never taken an m5 course and they've been there 12 18 months just using the software from learning off others can they take the exam or do they have to do do they have to do a module before they could sit the certification yeah the basic training is a requirement it okay. is a requirement yeah we would feel very un- although um, you know i'm fairly sure that there are people out there which are self thought um and you know and they are perfectly comf- comfortable with the software the training is still a requirement because we also have a sense of responsibility here you know we cannot like dish out or you know certificates to you know or 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 encourage people to take a an online examination uh for a complex uh, challenging product like armed five without having any tra- without having had any training so mm. that's the reason why we've decided that we we want that to be a, a requirement uh, mm-hmm. for the examination as well. Yeah. Um, and this is this is an unfair question, and, and feel free to to ask this to be struck from the record. Can't wait, so I can't today. wait. <laughs> but um, uh, so so, what other uh, certifications are there in the industry that would support or? Uh, you would recommend um, as well as the AFC. Okay, so there are there are uh, avenues out there you can explore if you want to. If you you know if you join the job in forensic video analysis and processing, uh, and you want to discuss with your boss and possible training opportunities there, there are there are things out there. Uh, they're not many yet, but they are increasing and improving all the time. Um, so the one that I underwent and uh is is widely known in the industry worldwide is the lever certification course uh the lever being a um a non-profit organization us based but operating internationally uh committed to providing training and certifications to people uh, in our industry in our job um and that certification is split into two areas if you like one is processing and the other is analysis and you can stop at the processing certification or the technician certification if all you're doing is processing video or downloading video or you know producing core compilations or enhancing license plate things that you could do in amp5 for example and then if you want you can develop and, and take the analyst certification which then will uh, you know, will teach you how to uh, express opinions based on factual analysis of footage uh, and provide that op- opinion in court, um, all based on examination, practical, theoretical, oral, uh, boarding and court simulations and all things like that. It's quite tough, but it's, it's quite good in the sense that when you come out of it, hopefully alive, uh, you will be more comfortable and confident <laughs> in dealing with uh, being challenged in court and things like that. Again, that alone it will not make you an expert, you know, but it will help in your in your in your in your path in your progress. Um, then, depending on other skills uh, or, or specific areas of your work, there are other modules out there or other companies that provide training courses. So, for example, if you are into audio announcement. Uh, there are also things you can do there. And one that I've uh, recently found useful, uh, it's, uh, it's a course on, uh, uh, on a collision investigation on, on, on video. Uh, it's, a, it's a course uh, run by a company called FCIR uh, from Mark uh, Crouch, Stephen Cash, um, the gentleman that run it up. Um, 
And I found that to be very useful because it incorporates two areas which in the past used to be isolated. So video analysis and collision investigation and merge them together because it is now being recognized that it is important to understand technicalities of video and limitations of video between you go and assess things like measurement, whether that's heights or speed and things like that. Um, other than that, there's plenty of courses that you can take in, uh, you know, on video editing, on compiling video footage. Um, and that's there's a wide choice out there because that's one area of uh, forensic video that kind of interlaces with broadcast. Do you know what I mean? So you may use like programs like Adobe Premiere or Avid Media Composer to produce core compilation things, things like that. And there are plenty of, uh, of options there. Um, so, yeah, those are the main ones. Um, you know, obviously, uh, I myself can all, always offer advice on an independent basis if a user needs or if uh, anyone needs any advice or help with, uh, with you know, with progressing uh, and taking care of their own development. And so what about with the certification, like, I'm, I'm not sure about the major release cycles of AMPT and how the product changes over time, but thinking about recertification. So obviously this is aimed at, hey, you've been using it for a couple of years. Here's a certification to prove to yourself pretty much as well, as, as well to others, but to yourself that you've reached a certain level of competency. Is there plans for a recertification where the exam will change over time or is there we're like, hey, we're going to look at after this one, if it's successful, let's do a more advanced one to like get people to learn even more skills and, and build on their current current set. So, uh, you know, AMP5 changes quite rapidly. We tend to release, but we tend to want to release at least four updates a year, um, okay. each of them consisting of a major feature, new feature, and some smaller additions and, of course, bug fixes and things like that. So, for example, uh, you know, in the latest release of 5, we've just released the ability of frame hash to do frame hashing, okay, uh, which is a massive new feature. In the previous uh, feature, we released the validation tool, which allows you to, um, you know, to uh, perform some automatic auditing of um you know of performance between one version and another of five or between five being used on one machine than another uh things like that so five now has got all these new features you know that we want to implement into our exams um and therefore if it's not a requirement that you are you have taken a, a module then it's certainly highly recommended that you do so so i'm getting away with that questions nicely okay uh so yeah that's the plan <laughs> In that regard, are you looking to certify for Authenticate as well? I mean, I, I, I get the other one, maybe not, because it's just for police to view things with. You know what sure. I mean? It's, it's, it's less of a, of, a, of, a, of a natural examiner tool. But for, for Authenticate, is that something you're looking at doing certification for As well? At the moment, we well? haven't got any plans to, to do certification for Authenticate. And, and the reason being is our user base of Authenticate is much smaller than that of five. Uh, hmm. And also the people that uh, all, th that sort of work is not as widely used in courts yet as, as it probably should be okay and it probably will be in the future so yeah. not quite yet um but you know we're always guided by what our users want uh, you know we we are as i said before we are a fairly small company so if we have a number of users saying we want to have certification in Authenticate, then we can certainly sit down and think about implementing that. Now, authentication is a much more uh, challenging sort of area of forensic video analysis that, uh, that you need to, you know, that you need to un undergo. I mean, uh, you know, authenticating video and imagery, understanding compression, you know, both spatial and temporal, and the traces of that that lives on the video uh, can be quite complex and challenging. We do have a training course on Authenticate. We haven't got any modules for Authenticate yet. Uh, but we, I can, what I can tell you, though, is that we are investing more into Authenticate. And, in fact, I can... I can uh, uh, sort of um, anticipate, okay, um, that the next release of Amt Authenticate will have a dedicated module on video authentication. 
whereas before we only had mainly imagery, still imagery authentication with some video tools. Uh, we are soon going to have a dedicated video module for AMT Authentica that will allow you to do video authentication on it. And therefore, more training opportunities there uh, and potentially certification in the future. It's quite funny, actually, because we were talking about yesterday afternoon and it just came out in the conversation. It wasn't even planned. Uh, so we will see how that develops. So watch this space. Okay, exciting stuff. For oh, sure. On. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, I think I think we've... I think we've done accreditation to death, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any question. No, not a stone we've left unturned. Um, so, I mean, I think I think we'll just sort of open the floor. Is there anything you can tell us that, I mean, apart from, I mean, you've already told us that AMP's got um, some things coming up in the pipeline. Is there anything else um, that, that AMP's got coming up that you want to share and we can get out to the to, to people to um, know about? The only thing I would say, sorry, is to finish it up nicely, really, is that we come across a lot of users who are frustrated and um, and and lost with with the uh, accreditation process in the United Kingdom I don't know about you guys in your in your areas um, you know nobody really knows how to tackle that the guidelines are very vague uh, not very specific in terms of technicalities um, validation seems to be a big a big issue for uh, for law enforcement organization validating the software validating the equipment validating procedures um and what we are doing now with uh, with amp5 well, with all our products is to aid that process as much as we can um and you know although it seems unconnected to what we're talking about it again is a manner of applying processes or applying uh, things in your workflow, certification, validation, accreditation, all the sort of things that ultimately will improve the quality of your work and will minimize the risk of errors. Um, and therefore, for any users out there, you know, who who are worried or who don't have, uh, and I know there are many, because I myself was one of them, um, you know, have any doubts, you know, get in touch with us um, at AMT because we want to know, because we want to be able to give you the tools to facilitate that process. Uh, it will still be up to, to users to, to do that, you know, so we can't sit down with you and do all the testing and all the, uh, all the test cards and all of that, but we can, you know, we can help with implementing tools in our products that will facilitate that, will make that process a little bit more time efficient. Yeah, that's really good. And like, it's a it's a can of worms talking to Cy and I about accreditation and different types of courses. Um, for sure, it's something that we've spoken about lots in the past, and it's something that I, I'm pretty sure we've got another episode just the two of us chatting about that in general because it it's something that we're passionate about, and it's something that is confusing for a lot of people. Um, yeah, sure, sure. And you know what? The reason why that is is that every organization does things differently. Yeah. Uh, you know, and there isn't going to be like one Bible that is going to sort problems for everyone. Mm. Uh, every every organization will have to implement their own processes based on their equipment, on their infrastructure, and things like that. But <clears> but we we can help. We can help, and we are localized as well. You know, yeah. so I myself operate from the UK, but we've got people in the US, we got people in Europe, in Asia. Uh, you know, we, we, we can we can help. We can assist. Uh, so I think yeah, that's what nice. we'd like to do as well. Awesome. Well, I mean, on behalf of Sinai, I just want to thank you for coming on and, and chatting through this. It's been great chatting with you and, and having you on and learning about the process that you guys are building and excited to see where it goes from here, being only a, a brand new certification coming out. And it sounds, sounds really, really exciting. But, um, yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah, the pleasure has been mine. It's been great talking yeah, to you guys. Um, yeah, I wish you well, and uh, let's keep in touch. And we're all in this boat together. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Definitely. Well, thanks to all our listeners. Uh, you'll be able to get this on YouTube, our Forensic Focus website, where we'll also have a transcript along with the video. Any of your favorite podcast apps, that be that Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Music, anywhere else you get your good podcasts from. Um, but thank you for joining us, and Cy and I will catch you all next time.